Hey everyone, welcome back. Into CUA here. My amateur radio call sign for all those of you that don't know what that is. Okay, um, this is sort of a uh, continuation and an update on my last video, which was my first video actually, on checking a bandpass filter that I have that's supposed to um, be from like basically 0 to 30 megahertz and when I did that test the thing that's different this time is that um, I had the noise floor set at a point where I was only reading minus 60 so I um, erroneously said that the attenuation on this filter was minus um, 40 decibels and since then realized that the noise floor on this can go farther than that down and so the question was would the attenuation on the filter follow it down into the noise floor even with it set such that it would be even lower and so that's what we've done um, we've changed the input attenuator it was set to 10 dB we turned that off I could turn the preamp on, but I believe that I might get some mixture distortion, so I'm not going to do that. But even so, with it set like this, and with the resolution bandwidth turned down to 30 kilohertz, and the video bandwidth down to 3 kilohertz, I brought the noise floor down to minus 90 decibels. And with it down at minus 90 decibels, with a start point of minus 20, that gives us an attenuation of minus 70 decibels, which is a lot more than the minus 40 that we had done on the first video and if you hear my cat in the background I apologize for that he wants to get involved you know how cats are right um, so anyway wanted to give you an update on that and one thing that I wanted to show you also um, just as uh, something that uh, was important I thought anyway when you're using an analyzer um, if you have a, you got something that you're measuring and it's way down in the noise floor like this, one thing you can do is um, adjust the uh, video bandwidth. You can turn that down, and the trace sweeps more slowly. So if it's a fast, uh, spurious, intermittent type signal, this wouldn't be any good. But if it's a signal that's there continuously, like this one is, um, you can turn that down. And clean up the noise. I'm going to show you what I mean. So right now it's set to, if you look here, if you can see it, it's set to 3 kilohertz for the video bandwidth. And I'm going to adjust that up in frequency. Now it's at 10 kilohertz. You know, the noise is sweeping a lot faster. All right. And uh, but also the noise, the amount of noise in the noise floor has increased. I'm going to go up to uh, 30 kilohertz. And as you can see it again, the noise has increased. So basically, it's kind of cleaning up the the uh, noise and the noise floor and it makes it a more readable waveform in that regard however it takes longer to perform the sweep again a lot of this is stuff that I'm learning as I'm going here uh, there's a great document out on the Agilent website on uh, spectrum analyzers um, I think it's called application notes 150 really really good article on all the different tests and different specifications that analyzers have and and um, why they're important and the kinds of things you might see or might not see um, depending on how your analyzer is set up or whether it's a digital IF versus an analog IF. Um, very enlightening article. Something that I would highly recommend that uh, you go read if you have the time. It's not that dry. It's a pretty good article really. Pretty fascinating. So I think that's about all I have on this. Thanks for listening. I hope you all have a nice day. 7-3 from N2CUA.